Hello, it's Claire again, and I've finally chosen the fabrics that I'm going to use for making my Luna Lapin and actually a Wilhelmina Mouse by machine. So I'm going to be doing the two characters together. So the first one that I've chosen, well, the first fabrics I've chosen are these two. So this is going to be for the main body of my um, Luna. This is actually the linen fabric that I showed you on my previous video. And I'm going to use this one for the inside ears. I think those go really nicely together. Um, so that's going to be my Luna. Um, my Wilhelmina Mouse, I've chosen these two fabrics. Okay, so I've chosen this one, which is that polyester mock suede, because I want to see how that sews up, and hopefully that will um, sew up nicely. And then I've chosen this one. This is quite a lot darker for the inside of the ears, but because there's so much, um, there's such a smaller area used by um, Wilhelmina's ears, and then I'll use it on the foot pads as well, then hopefully that should 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 look quite nice as well. So um, fingers crossed that will go nicely. So the next thing that we need to do then is once we have a book, uh, I'm going to be using this book, Making Luna Lappin's Friends, is um, you need to get hold of your book. Um, open it up into the pattern pages and then what we're going to do then is we're going to actually transfer the pattern from out of the book onto something that we can use to put onto our fabric and then to, to cut out and to use. So we're going to need some tracing paper. So I picked this up from a uh, an art store, as you can see I've used it before for other items, I do, I do dressmaking as well, so um, I use this for making my patterns. Um, you can use any kind of tissue paper, sometimes if you get something um, for Christmas presents, put that down while it's creepy wrapping, um, you can use um, tissue paper. The other thing that's very, very good to be used is um, actually greaseproof paper as well, um, you can get it in brown or in the white, and as long as it's not foil backed, because that'll stop you seeing through it, um, but as long as it's transparent enough to see through it, then that's fine. The other thing that you can use sometimes is photocopier paper because if you actually can manage, and, and I know this is going to be a bit of a long shot, sometimes you can lay your page, your copy of paper over the top and the, the lines of the pattern are dark enough to be able to see through. If not, if you can manage to isolate one page of your book and hold it against a window, with the light coming through from behind, obviously at daytime, not night time, um, then you'll be able to lay your photocopy paper over the top of that page. So you've got your window, then your book page, then your um, photocopy paper over the top, and then you'll be able to see through to trace trace through that. Um, with the tracing paper I've got, I'll be able to see straight through. So let me just get on with that, and um, I'll show you how we get on to trace it. It's a bit of a big blue Peter moment, and you probably know already, but just to reassure people that there's nothing that's I'm trying to do that's bizarre or out of the way there, then um, we'll just I'll just show you all the processes. As I said, my videos are for beginners. So if you're more advanced and you already know how to do all of this, there is a way of actually speeding up the videos. So you can put them on to one and a half or 1.25 times speed. And it speeds up my voice, which you don't need to see because you just want to look at the steps, I presume. Um, so you can always try that if you're short of time where you want to speed through, but just make sure that you've not missed something. So feel free to speed me up a bit more if you want to, if you're more advanced. Or if you're a beginner and this is the first time you've done anything like this then then let's take it steady and we'll go through it one step at a time okay so what we're going to do now is we've got the book open onto our page that we want to trace and we've got our tracing paper and hopefully you can see that as I put this page over the top of the um, pattern we can actually see through that and all I do is get a pen or a pencil obviously you need something quite dark just so you can see the pages and literally you're just going to trace around the outside edge you need to make sure that your page doesn't move your tracing paper doesn't move and you're trying to do as smooth a line as possible but we can smooth this up when we're cutting out and it will be it'll be there or thereabouts so we're just tracing around the outside edge of the shape that we're wanting to do in this case it's just a foot pad for Wilhelmina Mouse pay attention to any markings. Let me just mark this on here and then I'll bring it up to the up to the screen and show you. And also write on it what it is because once you've got all your little pieces, it's like a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. So once you've got all your pieces together, you want to know what to do. So you want to cut two in fabric for the foot, foot as opposed to felt. So if I just show you on this, this page here, this pattern piece here, we've got some little what we call notches here. So these little triangles here need to be marked onto your piece of fabric, um, sorry, onto your piece of paper for your pattern. As do things like this little cross here, they need to be marked on as well. I personally don't write, put on this seam allowance line, that's like a stitching guideline. 
because we're going to make these slightly bigger because that's what's intended for the felt um, and we're going to make these pieces all slightly bigger so we can machine sew these together and, and it'll be a bit easier but anything like these little notches here um, little triangles or markings like this or there is on Wilhelmina's face you can see the dot there mark that on um, as well as the eye and the whiskers and what have you so just just go through your pattern pieces and put those on as I say the dotted lines I don't tend to to put up put on wouldn't you have actually done that and trace that onto your piece I've got a piece here we've got one little mouse ear here that we've got play traced very bright on the light sorry you can't see it very well can you there we go okay so I've traced that out now onto the um, tracing paper and I've, I've marked the little triangle that's on that um, ear edge I've also put on there mouse ear cut to in felt and cut to in fabric and that's just because these ones here are being traced out and um, I might well use them for a felt one in the future so I thought well rather than making two patterns I'll use the one so so this one here um, so you need to put those instructions on because you need to remember when you're actually cutting this out as to what you need to do so once we've got our, our piece there on thing we're going to turn it over and I've just got some PVA glue because I've not got a, a glue stick handy but you might have a glue stick handy put a bit of glue on the back of that if you're only making one lunar you might not want to do this but because I make several then um, and I like making them for gifts and things and I know I'm going to make a few more and they are very addictive so just be warned just move that out onto the back of there with my finger you can use a little brush if you've got one don't forget to wash it out afterwards and then I'm just going to smooth that onto a piece of cardboard that I've just got to hand. This is why I say it's Blue Peter moment because actually we're gluing and sticking, aren't we? And that's what we've got now. We've just got our um, template onto the back of here. You can just use ordinary cereal box cardboard. Um, this one's got in, in Spanish, but that's because I live in Spain. So, um, yeah, I live in Spain. So therefore it's in Spanish, which would make sense. Um, but obviously um, you can use any kind of cereal box or whatever you've got to hand. As I like Blue Peter when we were all growing up. So just leave that to dry for a short while. Um, because it'll just make it easy and you won't rock up the tissue paper. I've got one here that I've, that I've done before, look, Wilhelmina's head. Um, and all you're going to do then is I'm just going to cut out it out on the line. So again, nothing rocket science with any of this at all. You can smooth off any of your little pencil marks where they did, weren't quite so even, but just try and keep true as true as you can to the original shape because that's what's going to give us the best measure of success. As I say, we're just going to cut around all of these edges and it's going to leave us with a felt sized template. Now, those of you who've been paying attention will know that I, that I do suggest that we put an extra seam allowance on here. So what I'm going to do is explain that to you in, in the next step. So it may be that you choose to add your seam allowance before you cut it all out. But for me, I'm going to add it on when I actually cut out my pieces from my fabric that is so in the end you'll end up with a jumble of piece pattern pieces like this so we've got Luna's ear and Luna's head we've then got a Luna body which is the same as the mouse body actually we've got a mouse head so let's put that near Luna's head we've got a foot pad which is the same for everybody the legs which are the same for everybody the arms for not for every every character but for the two that i'm making today and then this is the body of the base as well um, and you can see that i have marked out the little um triangles on there as well and on the foot pads as well that's just so we can mark those um as we're going along so this is what this is the stage we want to get you to get to next where you've traced out everything onto um your tissue paper you've then if you want to attach it onto card, you can just use the tissue paper as a pattern and stick that on, pin that onto your fabric pieces. But for me, I like to just use the card. So once we've got to all this stage, then we can move on to the next bit, which is actually going to be looking at our fabric and how we how we lay everything out for that. So let's get to this stage first, then, folks. So the next thing I've got here now is my fabric for my loon. I'm going to concentrate on cutting her out first because that will make it easier if I try not to do them both all at once. Um, and so I've got my main body fabric here 
um, and the outside fabric. And then this is the fabric I'm going to use for my foot, feet pads and for the inside of the ears. Now, if your fabric has been in your stash and it's a bit crinkled up like this piece is here, then can I suggest that you um, take it across to your ironing board and you just iron that out flat? Because if you try and cut out anything on here, even if you try and smooth it out with your hands, it's still going to distort the, your pattern pieces. And so the best thing that you can do is just pop this over to your ironing board um, now and then just iron this out flat because obviously we can use this much easier, much more... Um, effectively you're going to get a much better result if you do so for those extra minutes just just make all the difference to your work so i'm just going to iron this piece out because we're going to use this scrap up while we can um, on our luna and then i'll come back to you so now we're going to look at cutting out and marking the rest of the fabrics that we've got so i'm going to use luna's head first apologies if the light here is a bit bright I'm, I'm really playing around with that trying to get it right and i'm not quite sure that i have got it quite right so my apologies i hopefully you can you can see what we're working with so with a pattern shape like this when it's when it's can only be a certain weight so let's try and get this right so with a cir uh, circle a circle is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter whether you cut it that way or you twist it around the other way, you're still going to get the same shape. So this is back to math lessons, isn't it, I suppose, and, and geometry and what have you. And that's fine when you're cutting something out of felt, because felt doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. Both sides are the same. So you could cut out two of these, you only need one, but if you cut out two of these, so say the arms, for example, you can cut out two of the arms because we've got a shape here that's not symmetrical because it's symmetrical at the top here, but down here we need the little thumb bit. So in order to get that cut out correctly, we have to what's called mirror some of these pattern pieces. And what that means is we have to cut out some this way round and some this way round. On felt, you'll just lay them all this way and you'll just cut out your four because you need two per arm. So you're going to have cut them all out that way because it doesn't matter you can twist them around to make them fit but especially if we look at the fabric that we've got here for the Wilhelmina that we're going to be cutting out later the fabric here has got a very definite wrong side which hasn't got any um, fur effect to it and a very definite right side again on a patterned fabric like this one I'm going to use for the ears we can see a very definite that's an inside and that's the outside. Look how much more crisp the flowers are. So we know that there's a right side and a wrong side. So on, on pieces like the foot pad, where it doesn't matter whether it's a right or a left, it's no problem at all. But once we come to cutting out and marking out the um, pattern pieces for the non-symmetrical patterns like this arm, we need to make sure we cut out enough left and enough right. So on here, I've got cut two this way. And then I've got on the back here, I've got cut two this way because then those will match up correctly to give us the two sets that we need that have both got the right side of the fabric. I'm hoping that's making sense to you. I'm hoping to, to be able to demonstrate this as we go on. So let me just put that back out the way again. So with this linen, it isn't so much of an issue because then it's pretty much the same on both sides. There is a little bit of a right side and a wrong side, but we're going to, we're going to work with that. So as I'm marking these out, we're then going to mark out the right number that we need for each pattern piece. So again, from here, I've left a little bit of room around the outside. And I'm just going to, just again, mark out my quarter of an inch seam allowance just by, just by roughly following the shape of the arm anyway. But just adding that little bit extra onto it. So around the edge here again. And this is where the cardboard templates work really well because they don't they don't bend and crease they just stay still for me so I can just copy these across so let's just follow this up here and hopefully you'll be able to see if my hand isn't in the way you'll be able to see that we've actually got a piece marked onto the fabric trying to see what you can see onto the fabric and with a line around it so we're going to do to that orientation the same way so leaving our little gap and then I'm going to flip my template over and I'm going to cut two out the other way up and this is the same for the head and it's the same for the legs as well 
because the legs have a right way and a wrong way for right way, a left and a right to them. So you need to have two this way up and two this way up. And that's the best way to describe a mirror in it. The other way you can do it is if you fold your fabric in half and pin it together, then when you put your fabric pieces on and cut them out, you're automatically going to get those in half as well. But I like to try and get the most out of my fabric. So I cut mine singularly. So it just depends on which way um, we're going to go. So this is what we're going to do now is I'm going to finish off marking up all of these pattern pieces now onto the fabric. And then I'm going to cut out on my drawn line and stack them all up. So I've got a, a, a pack then that we can start to work from. So do that for each of your pieces. You need your arms, your legs. You need the base of the um, body because that's what Luna sits on. You've got Luna's body here, which are these triangle pieces here, which go around the body like that. And then we need a head. And the head as well is cut one this way, turn it round and cut one the other way so that you've got those two that when they're mirrored together, they'll be the, that you'll have two rights. You can put the right sides together. Otherwise, you'll end up with one the wrong way around. OK, so hopefully that all makes sense to you. Um, that's the next stage. We've traced off our pattern out of the book. We've put it onto card if we want to do that. And then we've, I've shown you then how to mark this onto your fabric and to make sure that you get the right orientation so you get mirrored copies of your pattern pieces that are not symmetrical. OK, let's move on to the next bit.